Welcome to How to Yu-Gi-Oh! Breakdown Yu-Gi-Oh! Skills First of all, I'd like to say thank you. Thank you for everyone who has joined the channel recently. Um, been quite, quite unbelievable. I've had quite a big jump from the last time that I uploaded. I think one of those videos has been the highest viewed video on my channel. So definitely things are only have been going up for me recently. I don't know what it is, but I guess you like your Yu-Gi-Oh Sensei so much. So thanks for that. Anyway, so just know that this video is going to cover the skills that you need in Yu-Gi-Oh. With that being said, it's gonna be business as usual. Let's get on with the rest of this video. Let us begin and now talk about the advantage principle. But before I talk about the advantage principle in Yu-Gi-Oh, what is advantage? Well, in Yu-Gi-Oh as a newcomer, you're gonna have to realize that sometimes advantage is something that can be gained with the more you play. But how do you know when you have higher advantage than your opponent? How do you know these intricate things when you're playing Yu-Gi-Oh? This is where I like to call the advantage principle comes in. This is a principle that I've seen as I've played the game for many years. And this is a principle that I will teach you now as a newcomer to the game. Let us begin. So what does the advantage principle facilitate? If we go to the next slide, you can see it facilitates one. A setup effect, two dummy effect, three backup effect, four recovery effect, and five plus effect. Let me explain these parts piece by piece so that you have a general understanding of what I'm talking about. So when we talk about the advantage principle, first of all, we go to step one, the setup effect. So setup effects are essentially the effects that you'll use in your deck that will set you up, hence the name. Does not sound too bad. Uh, these include your searchers, your play starters, and things like that. When you build this up, this will be part of your strong advantage that starts. Next are your dummy effects. These are the effects that you'll throw out there to throw off your opponent, i.e. these are going to be bait effects so that you can allow your, your effects that for your setting up to go through. Hence why it's called the dummy effects. So effects that you don't mind getting negated. You don't mind. But as long as these are the effects that take the hits. These are, so you, so you know to use your chain blocking, your chain linking, and all these things help you to gaining advantage. That's a lot of choices, which are wonderful. Number three, we have the backup effects. These are the plans that you have at the back of your mind when you're playing your deck. It's sort of like, what is the backup? If things go wrong, if the dummies haven't worked, we got to make sure that our setup is still safe. So these are your backup plans. If everything fails, we've got something here. When nothing ruins the game plan. Finally, we have your recovery effect. What happens when you've just been hit with so many effects and you're on the losing streak? How are we going to recover? Do we have a plan for this? Do we, have we set up effects in our deck that do this? I'm ready for whatever you dish out. And finally, five, the plus effect. How are we gaining advantage? How are we plusing? How are we increasing that advantage even further when we are in a winning position? This, all these five key steps is what I like to call the advantage principle. We are in the driver's seat. We decide who lives or dies. And in Yu-Gi-Oh, as I like to say, if you can implement all these five steps every turn, you automatically win the game. Facts. Okay? It doesn't matter what your opponent plays at that point. If the principle is followed with these five steps, if you can, one, set up your board uninterrupted and by using the, by throwing out bait effects and having a necessary backup and being able to recover and being able to plus as much as possible, then you automatically win that game. That's really convenient. How do we know when we're losing advantage? Basically for me, the key thing here is that out of these five 
advantage steps that you see in the principle, if you lose two of them, it's quite damaging. Say, for example, that it goes to turn two and you notice as the first player won that you can no longer set up as your opponent has stopped this. You still have bait effects to use. You still have backups and you still have a recovery maybe. You still have plus. But the moment that you have lost three out of this advantage principle, the moment that you cannot, you cannot set up, you cannot throw out dummy effects, and you cannot back up your place, this is where your advantage principle has shifted. And this is where that you need to realize that you need to always have a plus of getting yourself into having three effects, three like effects from your advantage principle turned online. The moment you've lost three of them, more than half, the duel is no longer in your favor. The duel has now flipped and become, and you are now losing advantage. And it is in realizing this that you have, that it is a lost cause. And you usually, usually most of the time when I face this in a duel, I always surrender and leave that duel aside. As that duel is a lost cause, it's gone. Losing part of that adva uh, with the advantage principle, losing all of that is so devastating and you cannot recover from this. Let's move on. Here we have the inverse where I talk about the negation principle. The negation principle works on the premise of stopping your opponent having their advantage principle implemented. And it works on this philosophy. For the next four turns, you can negate your opponent's advantage principle. You will automatically win the game. It takes four turns to gain advantage, to lose all advantage in that game. In Yu-Gi-Oh, four turns is pivotal in order for you to lose that kind of advantage. Now... Many would say that with current Yu-Gi-Oh, it only takes one turn. Yeah, it, that would be on the premise, obviously, if you're playing an absolute tier zero deck. If you're facing tier zero shenanigans, as we have been for the last four years, which is a complete misdemeanor or misnome that we just are in some weird times, then you're just going to lose that game unless you play a tier zero deck yourself then usually usually in a in a perfect world or in a in a balanced setting where both decks are of similar power levels the negation principle works on on the four if or four turns have passed and you are able to stop the opponent's ad advantage principle from following through for four turns you automatically win that duel. It's always my turn. I would say two turns as well in Yu-Gi-Oh! also means generally the same thing. If two turns have passed and you can stop your opponent for two turns, usually means it doesn't mean you're winning, but it means that the duel is going in your favor. And it's usually that two-turn clock that gives your opponent the ability to say, okay, I'm going to turn this around. I'm going to make sure that I get out of this negation principle and add the advantage principle and break this hole that I'm in. And so what does the negation principle entail? It entails one thing. It entails four separate um, um, effects that all culminate in the negation principle, which is one, prevent setup. Two, prevent recovery. Three, prevent backup, and four, prevent the plussing. One, prevent setup. Indeed, when you negate, your negate should fall, when you use the negation principle, it should follow these four key steps. The first type of negate you should be focusing on is preventing the setup of your opponent. Make sure that the negation you're doing prevents your opponent's setup. It's always my turn. The second thing is that you need to prevent recovery. 
Now, when I say prevent recovery, that doesn't necessarily mean negation. If you have ways to chain block or to chain using the skills that have been uh, or talents that have been provided to you or the rules that you know of in Yu-Gi-Oh, you can use that to prevent recovery. You don't get to play, you just lose. One, preventing backup. Indeed, if you are forward thinking and understand that your opponent has backups, you want to as well try and prevent those if you can. If you know, this is where deck knowledge comes in and where studying the meta comes in. When you know the arch when you know decks as you know yourself, then you can automatically implement these three steps in the negation principle pretty easily. Restriction is stronger than prevention. And finally, for the fourth thing in the negation principle is prevent plussing. Prevent away from your opponent gaining advantage for simply no reason. Do you know what time it is? It's locked on. This is the principle of the negation principle, right? Follow, it follows these four key steps. If I can negate my opponent, then I, need, I automatically win the game. Keep it short. Keep it simple. It only takes four turns to win the entire game. And usually, when I'm playing Yu-Gi-Oh, by the fourth turn, if I'm able to stop my opponent, usually by the second turn, if it enters the third turn usually, and I notice that my plan that I have succeeded in negating them, and my advantage principle has just completely superseded at that point in time i know the duel has gone to my favor and it usually means by that point in time by the third turn unless anything changes victory is yours so always remember this that when it comes to the negation principle when it enters the third turn this is where both decks are at normal power levels then by the third turn, if you're able to maintain the negation principle as player one to your opponent, it doesn't matter what happens in that duel. It doesn't matter what your opponent does. You've automatically won that duel. And this is where you know victory is favored towards you. Favored to you winning that duel outright. So remember that using the advantage principle and negation principle together in, in little tidbits can get you one step closer to becoming a Yu-Gi-Oh master and furthermore can help you realize when to tone it down and when to increase the pressure. It is these principles that can help you to win duels. Yo, let's go on to the next skill that you need to know as a new player in Yu-Gi-Oh! Keyword breakdown. Now, Yu-Gi-Oh! has keywords. And if anyone tells you he doesn't have keywords, I want you to slap them in the face. Believe it! And this is one thing that, as a newcomer in Yu-Gi-Oh!, no one ever tells you about these things. They don't tell you what the keywords are. Well, if you look at the bottom of this video at the end, I will put in the pinned comments, the in my pinned comments anyway, the videos that I've made showcasing the keywords in Yu-Gi-Oh. So they've already been made. You can go down to the bottom of this video and click them when you have time. Anyways, I'll just put a summary of the keywords in this uh, breakdown now. You need to know words such as when and if, once per turn, during either player's turn. Such sort of keywords are important. Now, why do I say the keyword breakdown is a skill you need in Yu-Gi-Oh? First of all, you need to not read as much in Yu-Gi-Oh. When you look at a Yu-Gi-Oh card, your first thought should be locating the keywords in that, in that monster or set effect, whatever it is, spell, trap, or monster. Locating the keyword on it, being able to instantly know what kind of effect it is. Is it is it a quick effect or is it a turn effect? Whatever kind of effect it is. And finally, the moment you understand Yu-Gi-Oh monsters or cards, rather, I would say cards, Yu-Gi-Oh cards, by their keywords, the moment they don't look so intimidating to you as a new player. One of the main 
uh, faults of new players especially is that they're told by so-called old players that Yu-Gi-Oh doesn't have keywords in them. That Yu-Gi-Oh is completely and utterly difficult and it's like Dark Souls where we're just gonna throw you off a cliff and watch you die. <laughs> you need to calm down with that. I will tell you as your Yu-Gi-Oh sensei that is completely false and complete lies that are being told to you right now. Don't fall for these lies. Don't fall for that nonsense, right? They're the truth you need to know. They're specifically old players are specifically telling you this so that you can fall and they don't want you to get up. Everyone in Yu-Gi-Oh is after you, is after your failure. Do you have to say it that way? And that is why, as a newcomer, you must rise above that and find out about keywords. Use them to your advantage. Understand that keywords help you to get one step closer to becoming a Yu-Gi-Oh master, my students, okay? Realize this, it's very important that you master keywords. In fact, I would say as a newcomer, this is the first thing that you need to know. The first two things you need to know in Yu-Gi-Oh is that memorize cards by their color, I would say. Know that when you look at a blue card, you that it's a ritual. Know that you know when you look at a white card, it's a synchro, etc. Know that when you look at key uh, uh, monster with keywords, that you're not overwhelmed, okay? The whole goal of this is that when you look at a long text in Yu-Gi-Oh, I don't want you to look at it as a newcomer and say, oh man, this effect is complicated. I'll give you an example of how your, your experience should be when you look at a Yu-Gi-Oh card. So for example, let's say there is a fusion monster which is Red Eyes Dragoon, yeah? This is a card with a lot of text on it, right? And as a newcomer, it can overwhelm you, okay? You can be scared of this text, especially coming from uh, another card game. It can just be simply overwhelming. But here's the trick. When you know the keywords on Yu-Gi-Oh, all of a sudden, Red Eyes Dragoon does not look as intimidating anymore because you know the keywords you only need to read one line of text. And what that one line of text will simply say this. Discard a card to negate an effect. Would you look at that? Would you look at that simplification of Red Eyes Dragoon there? All of a sudden, all that piles of text becomes completely meaningless as keywords allow us to find the key effects that we need to focus on in Yu-Gi-Oh. In fact, the keyword breakdown is extremely important for you as a newcomer, as it teaches you one of the most important skills in Yu-Gi-Oh, being able to find the correct information on a card. Being able to weed out the nonsense that you see on card. A lot of effects on Yu-Gi-Oh, on cards, are a lot of fluff and filler. They just don't mean anything. What usually means something are the keywords attached to effects. Usually a 20 card essay on a card usually only has two to three sentences that usually are relevant to the card itself. And it is your job, it is your duty as a newcomer to find those key three sentences. Okay, that's all I've got to mention. Let's go to the next skill that you need to know. Here it comes. The final skill that you need to know at the highest level. As you play Yu-Gi-Oh! Right? And as you attain a higher status in Yu-Gi-Oh! And want to master the highest levels of Yu-Gi-Oh! This is the barrier to entry. This activation condition law determines who is a master of this game and who is a failure. This is the law in Yu-Gi-Oh that determines the winner from the loser. This is the law and rule in Yu-Gi-Oh that as a newcomer, once you master this, once you understand Activision Condition Law, you can call yourself a Yu-Gi-Oh master. It's all coming together. It is Activation Condition Law. 
Activation condition law is eternal. It is what makes Yu-Gi-Oh! Yu-Gi-Oh! And is how Yu-Gi-Oh! is played at the highest level, at the highest of heights. And this is where it goes. So, what is activation condition law? I think I've talked about this in uh, the tips and tricks video, but definitely look at the bottom of this video as I'll have it in the pinned comments giving an explanation on that video and putting it there and linking that video there. Anyways, leaving that aside, let's summarize what activation condition law is. To explain activation condition law, let's explain how every effect works in Yu-Gi-Oh! by giving you the most basic of explanations of what activation condition is. So, what is activation condition? I will repeat and I will say it once here. Activation condition is this. Every card in Yu-Gi-Oh! has an activation condition requirement. And as long as that card doesn't meet its activation condition requirement, then that card will not activate. You expect me to believe that. Now, what do I mean by this? Let's give the most basic example with a card I like to call Droll and Lockbird. Droll and Lockbird has a simple effect with a simple activation condition. The activation condition of Droll and Lockbird is to activate this Droll and Lockbird, it needs to go to the graveyard. Very simple, very easy. All right, so, and the that's the activation condition of Lock Bird. It needs to go to the graveyard to activate. And its actual effect is, as soon as it's activated, neither player can draw cards. The point of this is that this is important. Now we have established the activation condition of Drawing Lock Bird, which is to go to the graveyard. We've established that it needs to go to the graveyard. That's its activation condition. So if we use a uh, card such as DDD Crow to hit it before it goes to the graveyard. Guess what? It won't activate. Nice! If we've activated Dimensional Shifter from the hand, which means Roland Lockbird gets banished, guess what? It doesn't activate. I like it. As it hasn't met its activation condition. You look at that example and say, what does, does this have to do with anything, uh, Sensei? It means absolutely nothing. That's where you're wrong. Because every single effect in Yu-Gi-Oh! follows activation condition law. Everything is not above activation condition law. In fact, it is the very fabric of Yu-Gi-Oh! itself. Okay? And as a Yu-Gi-Oh! master, you need to master the law and take it upon yourself to abuse it whenever you can. That, my friends, makes all the difference. Because if you want to win, if you want to become a Yu-Gi-Oh! master, my student, you must master activation condition law, and you must become activation condition law. Why not say one again? Okay. And so, with activation condition law, and I've told you what it is, and I'll repeat it again, activation condition law is this. Every card in Yu-Gi-Oh! has an activation condition, except normal or non-effect monsters. And if a card does not meet its activation condition, it will not activate. It's just that simple. You can't handle this power. That's all it takes. That's all it is, students. That's all it is. If you master activation condition, everything can be broken down into a simple sentence. So whenever an effect in Yugi activates, or see for example, I can give the best example. Say you, you are looking at that pesky or really complicated snake eye, snake eye match, and you're completely overwhelmed by all these effects floating around. But then all you need to do is ask yourself one simple question. What is the activation condition of snake eye ash? And if I prevent the activation condition of snake eye ash, or if that activation condition has been prevented, Will it activate? That really hits where it hurts. There, there can only be two answers to this, yes or no. And if, if the answer is yes, then you win that exchange. If the answer is no, then it continues. Now, you may think to yourself of, again, why is this important? Because that simple question 
breaks down every interaction in Yu-Gi-Oh! Every interaction in Yu-Gi-Oh! Every high level thing you do in Yu-Gi-Oh! as a Yu-Gi-Oh! master will come down to one simple question. What is, is that card's activation condition? And your, your second question will be, how can I prevent it? Okay? When you understand a card by its activation condition, and this is the thing as a Yu-Gi-Oh! master, when you've hit this point, and as a Yu-Gi-Oh! player, when you've played in long enough, and you understand Yu-Gi-Oh! long enough, and you become a Yu-Gi-Oh! master, you need to look at cards not by their effects, but by their activation condition law. Because as your Yu-Gi-Oh! sensei, I'll tell you this, the moment that you see cards by their activation conditions is the moment you are a Yu-Gi-Oh! master is the moment that you understand Yu-Gi-Oh! like the back of your hand. It is the moment that you become Yu-Gi-Oh! itself. And it's at that point that nothing can make Yu-Gi-Oh! complicated anymore. So this should be the end result of where you should be when you're playing Yu-Gi-Oh! This should be the pinnacle of what I would like to see you as a student come up to. This is where I expect you to be after you've gone through uh, my videos and understand Yu-Gi-Oh! to the highest level. It is by understanding activation condition that you are a Yu-Gi-Oh! master. And I'll leave it at that. Let's enter the conclusion. So, in this video, I've talked about the skills that you need to become a Yu-Gi-Oh! master. First of all, you need to understand the advantage principle. Understand that the advantage involves five key steps. And when you are able to implement those five key steps every turn, you win the game. Then you need to master the skill of negation principle. Understanding that with the negation principle in play, if you master all four steps of the negation principle and are able to implement it on on two turns, then victory is ever closer into your favor. And if you are able to do it on the third turn, then my friend, my students, that game is yours. And you've won that game instantly. Okay? But um, you need to understand as well that your opponent is also wanting to do the same thing. So here comes the question. How do I know when I'm losing advantage in a duel? Well, as I've explained in the advantage principle side of things, if you lose half of the key steps of your advantage principle, usually, and by all manners of accounts, that duel is over and lost. While, yes, there are exceptions to the rule, um, there always is, but it's usually best to cut your losses at that point and focus and use it to build um, advantage in the next game. This is a good skill to understand, to understand that there are some games that you cannot win and it is better to cut your losses immediately and just rip off the band-aid and just scoop it right there, okay? With the negation principle, it's the same thing. You want to be able to, it is better to have a, a rolling negate, a negate that you can do every turn, than have a negate that you can do uh, just destroying everything. Sometimes that's what's best. Finally, let's go to the key words breakdown that I talked about. This is another skill that you're gonna need to know as well. Knowing cards but their keywords is important. Especially when you're new to Yu-Gi-Oh! This is going to be your main way of playing the game. As a newcomer, you will first need to understand cards by their keywords. This is going to cut down on reading. As a Yu-Gi-Oh! sensei here, I must tell you, we need to cut down on that reading. Reading is no good. Reading is bad. Yes, the memes are correct. Believe it! We should not be spending our time reading. And as a Yu-Gi-Oh! player, as now that you've entered this game, you, should, you shouldn't either be spending time on reading. What you should focus on is dueling. And that is why you need the tool, the armor 
of the capabilities of keyword breakdown in your arsenal. You need to spend that time strategizing, not wondering why your monsters effect don't work. That is not important right now, which is why you need to master keywords. In fact, I would say keywords is the most fundamental thing as a newcomer that you need to master. So as your Yu-Gi-Oh Sensei, master the keywords and Yu-Gi-Oh will get much simpler. The, the other thing, the fourth thing is, and the final thing I would say is the activation condition, right? This is something that will take a while to master. Activation condition is not something you can just master overnight. Think of activation condition as if you are a karate master, then activation condition is the black belt. That is where you need to go. That is your end result. That is you attaining master status. That is you understanding Yu-Gi-Oh to the point where nothing can phase you. It is at that point of understanding that you are, you become Yu-Gi-Oh itself, okay? It is a state of Zen. It is a state of knowing. It is a state of all-knowing, all-seeing, all-powerful, okay? That is where you need to be, the state of activation condition. But like with all things, it comes step by step by step. You first need to fully master keywords in Yu-Gi-Oh. Master them. Understand what they are and then understand the advantage principle. Understand how to apply advantage, when to retreat with the advantage and when to cut your losses. Understand the negation principle, how to use it, how to tweak it and how to let it go sometimes. And then fully understand and then once you've mastered all this, you therefore understand the activation condition uh, law. Now, let me give you some, some guidance on activation condition, right? As I've said before, activation condition law states that every card in Yu-Gi-Oh except normal and non-effect monsters have an effect. But if they cannot meet their activation condition, then they cannot activate. Now, this simple sentence and simple knowledge of knowing might not might mean nothing to you at this point in time it might mean it might be complete gibberish at this point but understanding that sentence understanding and fully comprehending what that means right if you understand activation condition law if you live and breathe activation condition law and understand what it is what it means what power it will give you in the Yu-Gi-Oh! trading card game, then you instantly become a Yu-Gi-Oh! master. Because what Activation Condition does is it breaks Yu-Gi-Oh! from a complicated game where effects are floating around to essentially two questions that you keep asking yourself every time, right? Is the moment of clarity. Right? It just simplifies everything to such, to such a level that nothing phases you anymore. And that's why I would say I really want you all to become Yu-Gi-Oh! Masters and look at through Yu-Gi-Oh! through the lens of activation condition. Because it is through that lens that everything becomes clear. And everything in Yu-Gi-Oh! becomes so much simpler. And as your Yu-Gi-Oh sensei and as someone who wants Yu-Gi-Oh to succeed and someone who wants to break the stereotype that this Yu-Gi-Oh is complicated, I would say it isn't complicated. I would say it is because they do not understand for what they do not know. But if you know this law, if you understand Yu-Gi-Oh law, master it, contain it, then as I've said, you are one step closer to becoming a Yu-Gi-Oh! master. That's all I've got to say in this video. We come to the end of this video. So, as I like to say, you are one step closer to becoming a Yu-Gi-Oh! master. My fate, right, is in your hands.